Hi guys, this is App Unwrapper. I'm here with Lamplight City on iOS. I played some of the game on my PC back when it originally released, but I much prefer to play on my iPad. So now I can, and I'm gonna start a new game. Enjoy. Ugh. Bill, wake up! The carriage is on fire! That's only funny when I do it to you. What's the matter? Have a rough night? Uh, bit too much Bowlingworth ale is all. That stuff really creeps up on you. Sorry I couldn't join you, but I was long overdue for a quiet night in with Addie. That's fine. There'll be plenty of other opportunities. <laughs> Hell, maybe Adelaide can even join us. It's been ages since she last drank me under the table. I'm afraid she mostly sticks to tea these days. Miles, what exactly is it we're looking into? Uh, I may have dozed off during the briefing. <laughs> Honestly, Bill, one of these days Snelling's gonna notice. No, he won't. Why do you think they put him behind the desk? The man couldn't find his own backside with a pair of pliers and a lantern. Very funny. Anyway, it's a burglary at the Hambrook Flower Shop. A burglary, eh? How dull. Eh, at least we'll have enough time to get a drink afterwards. You seem awfully certain of that. I am. In fact, I'd bet the devil my head that we're done within the hour. Well, the devil's gonna be disappointed that his winnings are so meager. Ah, we've arrived. After you, Bill. I remember. I don't know how to pronounce that, but they tell you, I think. Thank you. Keep the change. And so, our night of excitement begins. You more than anyone else should know that there's rarely a dull night in Chumley. I have a feeling tonight will be the exception. Until we get to the pub, that is. Keep your mind on the case, Bill. Now let's get a move on. Right, Chumley. I remember that now. That reminds me. I should pick up a bouquet for Addie when we're done here. Seems like you've been spending more time with me than with her lately. I sure hope she's not the jealous type. Glad this thing is lit. This isn't really the type of place I'd prefer to be at this time of night. Don't worry, Miles. I've got your back. I can't believe that thing made it all the way across the Atlantic in less than a week. Don't scoff at the future, Miles. Pretty soon, we'll all be riding those things to work. Especially considering Prince Harold is their big celebrity passenger. All right, let's check the door. Come on, Bill. Charming little place, isn't it? Charming, but empty. We need to find the owner. Always so to the point, Fordham. If ever there was a better time to stop and smell the flowers. I think I'll leave that to you, Bill. With my allergies? Hardly. Not too many left. Seems business isn't so bad around here. Well, you know what they say. There are only three certainties in life. Death, taxes, and people taking advantage of sales. <laughs> this is quite the selection. Come over here and take a whiff, Bill. Sure, if you don't mind me getting snot all over your coat. Oh, no, not the Myers case all over again. On second thought, you can just stay over there. I want to see something. Aha, okay, so holding on the screen shows interactive points. These prices are pretty reasonable. The place I go in Worcester is clearly robbing me blind. If you think those are bad, don't go near the flower shops in Leon. Plants hanging on hooks. 
Nice space-saving method. I'd probably bang my head against them constantly if I had them in my apartment. Got a minute, Bill? For you, Miles, I've got five. Huh. A burglary at a flower shop. Not the most thrilling case we've had, is it? If I didn't know any better, I'd say Snelling's been giving us the boring cases lately on purpose. Why would he do something like that? He's eyeing a promotion to chief of police. He'd sell his own mother's cane if he thought it would help. Plus, there's no secret he doesn't like us. I can't understand why. I've shown him nothing but respect. It's because you're too good at what you do. And because you're friends with me. What's that got to do with anything? Not everyone is as open-minded as you, Miles. Let's just leave it at that. Still feeling rough, Bill? Yes. But I'll feel better once this case is finished and we can go down to the Angel for a pint or four. Hair of the dog? No better medicine. You ever miss living out here, Bill? About as much as you missed stepping in that pile of horseshit last week. Uh, I was distracted by that story you were telling me about your sister. How's she doing out west, anyway? Well, she's not in the chum, so... fantastic. Living here was about as fun as wearing a vest made of meat to a dogfight. I'm glad we both managed to get out. Oh, and by the way, Miles, you didn't do such a great job of cleaning your shoes. Hmm. That would explain all the funny looks I've been getting. Mm -hmm. Let's get back to it. All right. Wait, there was more, maybe. Got a minute, Bill? For you, Miles, I've got five. When's the last time you took any time off? That's a good question. What year is this again? I think we've both been working a bit too much lately. Addie's been wanting to go visit her mother in Dixie. Maybe we can all go. Well, that sounds nice, but uh, I wouldn't want to be a third wheel on a visit to your in-laws. Unless... Would Adelaide's brother be there by any chance? You're incorrigible, Bill. <laughs> it's one of my finer qualities. <laughs> Got any opinions on the upcoming election? I'd just be glad when it's all over. It seems like the last few months have been nothing but people giving opinions and telling me what to do without a moment's peace. I know what you mean. I already saw some kids putting up Atwood posters down my street. I already drew mustaches in all the ones on my street. Handlebar? Yeah, you know me too well. I always thought of Atwood as more of a Van Dyke type of man myself. Hmm, I can see that. Yeah. Well, there's something to do tomorrow. I feel them with the election stuff. You enjoying this weather? It's a nice evening for it, not too hot. I find a bit of fresh air always helps clear out the mental cobwebs. It's just too bad the air in the chum is about as fresh as a week old corpse. At any rate, it'll be winter before you know it. The whole city will be shut down and we'll be digging bodies out from under the snowbanks. Always something to look forward to. <laughs> the ferry ride over was surprisingly uneventful, don't you think? I know. It doesn't really feel like a visit to the chum without seeing at least one fist fight. Oh well. There's always the ride back. Let's get back to it. All right. <laughs> all right, I exhausted all options. Let's try the bell. Be right there. Oh, hello, gentlemen. I must say you caught me by surprise. I was preparing to close soon. May I help you find anything? The flowers in the center display are half price this week, and I have a special on chrysanthemums today. Or perhaps a custom bouquet for the special ladies in your lives? I have no need myself, but uh, maybe Adelaide would appreciate a little something. Eh, Miles? Those peonies in the corner look nice. I'm afraid we're not here as customers tonight, ma'am. We'd like to have a word with the proprietor. Is he in? I see. I am Cecilia Handbook, and this is my shop. What can I do for you, gentlemen? I'm Detective Miles Fordham, and this is my partner, William Legere. We received a report of a burglary at your store. A report? From whom? I never contacted the police before, and I didn't this time, either. It was made anonymously, but are you saying this isn't the first time it's happened? Correct. It's happened three times. But considering the police hard to care about the daily muggings and vandalisms around here, I didn't think they would be interested in something so trivial. Well, we're here now, and we'll do all we can to help you. We'll have to see about that. If you wouldn't mind, Mrs. Sandbrook, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Very well, Detective. 
Could you give me the details concerning the burglaries? About three weeks ago on Monday, I noticed that my order of Easter lilies was missing. At first, I thought nothing of it. Sometimes certain types of flowers are unavailable or arrive in poor condition. These things happen. Then two weeks ago on Wednesday, it happened again. But this time, I noticed something rather odd. Go on. When I opened the shop, there were six crowns and ten shillings on the counter. That's exactly the cost of two orders of lilies. Last Friday, it happened yet again. The lilies were missing, and there was payment for one order on the counter. I believe that someone has been breaking into my shop after hours, taking the lilies, and leaving money behind. How unusual. Hmm. Have you noticed any suspicious characters lurking around? Detective Fordham, this is Chumley. You can't throw a stone without hitting a suspicious character. <laughs> and if you've noticed my window, you'd be aware that stones get thrown around quite a bit in this neighborhood. If you're looking for trouble, you're far more likely to find it out there than in here. I meant if you'd seen anyone out of the ordinary near your shop. Only the two men from the police who entered it tonight. That is most definitely out of the ordinary. Have you found any evidence of a break-in? No, the front door is always locked. My assistant Trevor and I are the only ones with the key. Are there any other points of access to the building? The upstairs windows, I suppose, but I make sure to keep them locked and neither of them have been broken. Would you allow us to have a look upstairs? <sighs> is that really necessary? I was just about to close up the shop. It won't take but a moment. Fine, I suppose you may, but please, don't dally too long. Mm. So this burglar has been paying for the stolen goods? That would appear to be the case, yes. I really don't think this could even be considered a crime. That's one of the reasons I didn't bother reporting it to the police. And the other reasons? Oh, I think I've already made those quite clear, Detective. You mentioned your assistant has the other shop key. What can you tell me about him? His name is Trevor Hastings, and he has been working for me for the past 10 years. Do you trust him? Implicitly. I've known him for ages, and he has been my full-time assistant since shortly after my husband died. You're not suggesting he had anything to do with this, are you? Not at all. I would like to speak with him, though. Where might I find him? It's Friday, so he should be on his way back from the docks right now. He'll be bringing my flower order within the hour. Good. We'll meet him here, then. If that's all right with you. I suppose I don't really have much of a choice, do I? Have you been in business long? Yes, I opened this shop 30 years ago, along with my late husband, David. But the past 10 years, I've been running things on my own. Don't you feel unsafe being here by yourself so late into the night? Detective, when you've lived in this part of town as long as I have, it takes quite a lot to scare you. I think that's all the information I need for now. All right, Detective. Oh. Interesting choice of decor in here. Perhaps it wasn't always used as a storeroom, although I can understand why it would have been converted. Yeah, it is rather drafty in here. The window latch, securely locked. Interesting. There's a gap between the window and the frame here. No wonder it's so drafty in this room. Hmm, I wonder. What are you thinking, Fordham? That it's time for an experiment. I'm going to need a tool, however. Something long and thin should do the trick. Shouldn't be too hard to find something like that around here. How do I go back? Oh, that's how. 
I would imagine that keeping a consistent temperature in here is important for the flowers. When do you suppose this contraption was last serviced? Hard to say. Definitely not recently, if the dust buildup is any indication. A pastoral landscape. Definitely nowhere near here. I've never much understood art, but it would be nice to see a place like that in person. A young lady. Perhaps a relation of Mrs. Hambrook? I can see the resemblance. Sort of. A rather distinguished looking gentleman. Reminds me of Captain Snelling, if he ever smiled. Seems to be the broken pot storage area. Why not just throw them away, I wonder? It's likely they're going to be repaired. I noticed some faint cracks in some of the pots downstairs. Hmm. I've seen this type of device before. It's a special container for growing plants. Specific temperature and water conditions can be adjusted. Seems to be empty right now, though. And judging by the dust, it hasn't been used in a long time, if ever. It seems Mrs. Hanbrook isn't too fond of steam tech, or just doesn't understand it. I don't think this window would serve as a viable means of entry. It's a nice view, though. You can hardly see the vomit and manure piles on the street from up here. <laughs> Unmarked, but if the smell is anything to go by, this is where the flowers are stored when delivered. I'll keep my distance, then. Where do I find the long... Hmm. Bill? What's going on, Miles? The gap in the window upstairs is intriguing. Do you think it might be the point of entry? Indeed. I just need to find something long and thin to confirm my theory. I think you were born with something like that, Miles. You're disgusting, Bill. I know. That's why I always do the dirty work. <laughs> I've heard of honor among thieves, but have you ever known a thief to pay for stolen goods? Perhaps conducting normal business is uh, just too boring for him. Do you think he might be doing it for the thrill? There could be any number of reasons. The best way to find out is to catch the culprit and ask him ourselves. What's your impression of dear old Mrs. Hanbrook? I like her. Good old-fashioned, tough-as-nails chumley woman. Reminds me of my mother. Your mother was never quite so stubborn. Why do you suppose she's so reluctant to accept our help? It's a chum thing, Miles. You wouldn't understand. Let's get back to it. All right. Okay. Let me go back down. Ha! This hook is exactly what I need. Mrs. Hanbrook, may I borrow this hook for a few minutes? It's crucial to our investigation. Is that so? Yes. I promise I'll put it back as soon as I'm done. Please do, Detective. Good. Bill, it's time for our experiment. And uh, what is this experiment going to be exactly? Simple. I'm going to see if this hook can get me inside the shop. Hmm, rather dark out here. Watch your step then. This experiment of yours isn't worth a broken neck. I'll be fine. Now then, could you please close and lock the window, Bill? Oh, I have to do it. Well, I'd say this is fairly incontrovertible proof that the building can easily be broken into without arousing suspicion. Where'd you learn how to do that anyway? You taught me, remember? Nah. Are you sure it was me? Positive. We were a few pints in at the Angel about five years ago, and you decided I should learn how to pick locks. What else have I taught you how to do while drunk? That would be telling. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh. 
Oh. Oh, Trevor. Evening, Cecilia. I've got the order ready to bring in. Trevor, these are Detectives Fordham and Leger. They say there's been a report about the burglaries, and they're here investigating. I... I only did it because I think it's been going on too long. As much as you want to, we can't handle this ourselves. We can discuss the matter later. In the meantime, the detective would like a word with you. I'll be needing to bring in the flowers first, if that's all right. Otherwise, some hooligan's likely to run off with them. My partner will keep an eye on your flowers. Bill, would you mind? Ah, the glamour of police work. Now, Mr. Hastings, if I could ask you a few questions. Go on, then. What can you tell me about the recent burglaries? I wish Cecilia had contacted you a lot sooner. She's a damn fine woman. But sometimes I think she'd rather jump in a rose bush than ask for help. Had to take matters into my own hands. This needs taken care of, and we can't do it on our own, as much as Cecilia would like to. Anyhow, all I know is someone's been making off with some flowers and leaving money behind. No idea who it could be, how they're getting in, or why they even bother paying. In my day, if you robbed a place, you did it the right way. It's a sad state of affairs when even burglars don't do their jobs correctly. Do you have much experience with burglary, Mr. Hastings? Now, I never said that, Detective. Have you noticed anyone or anything suspicious around here recently? Nothing but the usual roughnecks, ragamuffins, and drunkards. Like I said, it's a real mystery. Could you walk me through the process of your deliveries? Of course. There's no great science to it. On Monday, Wednesday, and Friday afternoons, Cecilia gives me her list of flowers to pick up from the wholesalers. I head over to Gas Cone around sunset when they get their shipment, and I give them her order. They load up the crate, I pay for it, and then I lug it back here. How long does that take? Between moving the crate and getting it across the river on the ferry? A couple of hours. Usually the store's closed by then, so I use my key to get in and leave the crate inside for Cecilia to open in the morning. That's all there is to it. Told you it wasn't very complicated. Do you ever leave the crate unattended during that time? No, sir. Never more than a minute. I may be old, but I got good eyes. I'd see if there were anything amiss. Besides that, I check to make sure the crate is still sealed when I drop it off. I'm not about to let Cecilia down by being careless. How long have you been working for Mrs. Hanbrook? Been about... Ten years now, I reckon. I used to help with deliveries now and then when it was her and David, her husband. But after he passed, she offered to make me her assistant. Unfortunate way to get it, but I needed the work. Used to be I had a job at one of the airship yards, but they let me go after I was injured by one of those newfangled steam machines. So the offer came at a good time. Besides that, Cecilia needed looking after, even though she'd never admit it. If I'm being honest, we're both getting a bit long in the tooth. Not sure how much longer we'll be keeping this up, but as long as I'm upright and breathing, I'll be bringing these crates along. Even if it is murder on my back. I admire your work ethic. I've got a job to do. Not enough people these days seem to respect that. Thanks for your time, Mr. Hastings. I'll let you get back to work. Appreciate it, Detective. If you don't mind, Detective, I still need to check the crate before I bring it in. Of course. Thank you again for your help. Learn anything? Possibly. I may have an idea. Ah, you're being cryptic. That's always a good sign. But if you've got a plan, let's talk about it. Got a minute, Bill? For you, Miles, I've got five. Any thoughts on Mrs. Hanbrook's assistant, Trevor? Yes. I feel sorry for him. Why? He seems to enjoy his work. Nah, no, it's not that. He's obviously smitten with Mrs. Hanbrook, but she won't give him the time of day. What? You only saw him for a few moments. How in the ether did you get that impression? The way he looked at her, the way he spoke when he confessed to contacting the police. Shall I go on? No, that's fine. I see what you mean. Really, Miles? You'd be surprised what you can learn from people if you just look at them. Why bother doing that when I've got you to do it for me? Right. Based on what we've been told in our experiment, I can only conclude that our burglar is using the upstairs window to get into the shop. 
So what do you propose we do about it? It's happened repeatedly over the past three weeks. On one of the delivery nights, since it has yet to occur this week and today is Friday, logic dictates it should be tonight. So we settle in and wait to see if the burglar returns? Catch him in the act? Exactly. It's our best chance of solving this before the trail goes cold. <sighs> and I was really looking forward to getting that drink at the Angel tonight, too. I know, but it's as you said yourself. There'll be plenty of other opportunities. Besides, forbearance is good for the soul. Spoken like someone who truly has no idea how to have any fun. I'm sure I'll get the hang of it one of these days, especially with your expert tutelage. Okay, let's go have a chat with Mrs. Hambrook. I'm sure she'll be delighted to know we're spending the night. <laughs> Damn, I forgot to bring my deck of cards again. At least it's quiet up here. I'm surprised we didn't go deaf after the last time we did this. What? I said... Oh, right. Your sense of humor remains on point. <laughs> Miles, have you ever considered leaving all this behind? What, you mean quitting the Force? The Force, the city, going off and seeing what else is out there, you know? Ah, I'd miss it too much. Wouldn't you? I was thinking I might visit Harley out west. She makes it sound like a dream in her letters. Wide open spaces, fresh air. I know I'm a city boy and would probably miss New Britannia's filth and squalor after a week, but... You should do it. A change of scenery never hurt anyone. Plus, it's much easier for you than it is for me. I've got a family to consider, after all. Ah, right. Oh, no, I, I didn't mean it like that, Bill. It's just... Shh! I think I heard something. Oh, no! Bill? <laughs> Stop! Police! Damn it! He's got up the fire escape. We can corner him on the roof. Stay close and keep me covered. What's that on the floor? Bill! Stay back, officer. I've got a knife. Ready your pistol for him. But you're too close! I trust you, Miles. Your pistol, now! There's really no need for this, officer. I respect your desire to uphold justice. Mine is more important. If you let me go, I won't come back. And we can all forget this ever happened. Don't listen to this lunatic, Miles. Take your shot before things get worse. Look, we've caught you red-handed. Put down the knife, let my partner go, and give yourself up. No! I'm not going to jail. Do you know what they do to people in there? Yes, I do. If you cooperate, I'll see if I can get the judge to ease your sentence. I appreciate your tactics, Fordham, but this really isn't the time. Come on, all you've really done is taken some flowers. You're not a killer. Don't make things worse for yourself. You don't know anything about me. But one thing's for sure. I'm not going to jail. So let me go free, or else your partner is going over the side. Fordham, this madman clearly can't be reasoned with Take your shot! Now! Okay, we'll look the other way just this once. Just let my partner go! Fordham! Are you insane? Bill, don't! Bill! Bill! Oh, God! I am so sorry, my friend. I am so, so sorry. I think it happens either way, though. Miles, wake up! Your house is on fire! Huh? What? You see, I told you it was funnier when I did it to you. Yes. Yes. Hilarious. What's the matter? Have a rough night? Hmm. Overdid it on the soporific. Why do I feel like I've had this conversation before? I'm just glad you're in the mood to converse again. Seriously, you took so much of that snake oil last night, I was starting to think you wanted me quiet for good. It's no personal slight. I just need some quiet time, or I'll go insane. I get it. We all need our space. I know it's not easy, but there's really no need. Not easy. 
Bill, I've been hearing your voice since you died. You don't shut up unless I take that accursed medicine. I'd say that qualifies as a bit more than not easy. Yeah, well, how do you think I feel? You think I enjoy being trapped here, listening to you whine about how hard your life's become? You at least still have yours. I'm losing my grip on reality, and it's all because of you. Believe me, I know. It's not a pretty situation. But the bottom fact is, you're stuck with me. So you can either keep living this way and ruin your life even more than you already have, or you can do as I've told you and try to figure out a way to let me move on. Right. For the thousandth time, you want me to find the burglar from the flower shop. Yes, exactly. I still don't get how that's going to help. I've told you several times, although to be fair, if you actually listened to me, I'd still be alive. At any rate, you wouldn't have been in that situation in the first place if not for him. Once the criminal has been caught and is in custody, we'll both get what we want. Revenge? More than that, you'll have that elusive thing you always wanted to give others. Closure. You do realize the trail's pretty much frozen at this point. Our man has seemingly vanished into the ether. That's no excuse not to keep trying. I know the cases Upton's been giving you these past few months haven't been the most thrilling, but they've at least kept you active. So just keep at it. Something has to turn up eventually. Unless, of course, you want to wind up in Riverview Asylum. And if that happens, I'm really not going to keep quiet. Fine. Good man. Now, I suggest you stop talking to thin air, or Adelaide's gonna start wondering if you've gone mental. Or just maybe, she'll stop wondering. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> Alright. Oh, wouldn't you say it's time for a change of clothes, Miles? You've been wearing that coat for who knows how long. So? Addie gave it to me. Besides, it gives me character. Right. Brooding detective in a long black coat. That's never been seen before. What are you talking about, Bill? Never mind. Don't worry, Miles. I don't watch when you and Adelaide are having your private time. It would be nice if you didn't spend the whole time humming. I thought you appreciated some romantic music. I always like that self-portrait of Adelaide's mother, even if the eyes do always follow you around the room. Cozy little winter getaway. That would be a welcome change from the winters in this city. Remember before you started taking that medicine and you could actually read a book for more than 10 minutes before falling asleep? You were a lot more fun to talk to back then. That's a fun little apparatus Adelaide got you. Very soothing. Watching it spin long enough puts me right to sleep. I'd say that's really more the soporifics doing. Pretty, but I'm glad I don't have a sense of smell anymore. It's admirable just how organized Adelaide is. Maybe someday the same can be said about you. Ha, <laughs> that poster brings back some memories. That's from around the time you two met, isn't it? Yes, back when Addie was singing at the Angel. Miles, care to explain what you're doing? Just checking to make sure everything that needs to be in here still is. Right. If you start taking that stuff during the day, you're really going to have problems. You should have let me be buried wearing my hat. At least it wouldn't be gathering dust like it is now. If I'd done that, it would be dust right now. Heh. <laughs> Fair point. Oh, Adelaide's last performance. She could really bring the house down. I think that's everything. Well, look who's awake. Ready to rejoin the living? Very much so. You were talking in your sleep again. Did I say anything interesting? Do you ever? <laughs> you have to admit, she's got you there. How are you feeling? A touch groggy. I think I took a bit too much of the soporific last night. That's what I thought. 
When you went for your after lunch nap, you'd barely gotten breakfast down. I saved you some bread and cheese if you're hungry. Thank you, but I haven't got much of an appetite. You really should regulate your doses more carefully, Lo. I'm sure dull senses and an empty stomach aren't much help to your work. By the way, a message arrived via courier for you this morning. I put it on the table along with today's newspaper. Thank you, dear. Hmm. Upton says she's got a big case for me. Does she go into any more detail than that? No, but then you know Upton. Always on a need-to-know basis. Especially since she's been giving me these cases under the table. To be fair, they haven't exactly been anything of note. True, but she's still sticking her neck out for me. I can understand why she's so secretive about it. I think she just misses having you around the station. Poor Connie. With you quitting and me dying, she must be bored stiff at work. Anyway, I'm supposed to meet her at the... ruined coffee house. That can't be right. It's not like Constance to make mistakes. She must have gotten in somehow. Guess I'll head over there and see what she's got then. Hmm. Second bizarre murder baffles police. so weird to me that Chalmondly is pronounced Chumley. <laughs> okay. Addy? Yes, dear? How's work going? Do you have any appointments today? Yes, one this evening. It's been a bit slow lately, but pretty soon it'll be debutante ball season, and all the Gascon grand dames will need their hair done. You sure I can't convince you to let me give you a little trim? You've been looking awfully scruffy lately. What's the point? I've got no need to go peacocking around town. You're the only girl for me. I like it when you're clean cut. It brings out your eyes. The way my eyes have been looking lately, I think it's best to keep them hidden. How are you? It feels as though we haven't seen much of each other these past few days. I've been fine. Addie, you're not a very good liar. What's on your mind? <sighs> I'm worried about you, Miles. I know, but I've told you, there's no need to worry about me. I'm all right. You're not all right, Miles. I may not be a good liar, but you can't fool me either. I am all right. What do I have to do to convince you of that? You could start by throwing out that sleeping medicine. It's turned you into a different person. I need it to sleep, Addie. I'll become an even worse person without it, believe me. I know Bill's death was hard for you. It was hard for all of us. But whatever it is that's bothering you, you know you can talk to me about it. That's what I'm here for. I know, my love. Your support means the world to me. I need some time to deal with things. That's all. It won't always be like this, I promise. Making promises you can't keep, eh, Miles? That'll end well. I've still got that song you sang last week at the Rutherford stuck in my head. You were amazing. Thank you, Miles. That was a lovely evening. I always enjoy it when Joseph brings out his violin and we can relive the old days. Certainly nicer than when he spends hours telling the exact same story whenever you visit. They were very glad to see you, you know. It's probably the most fun I've had in months, to be honest. They've invited us for dinner again in a couple of weeks, if you're feeling up to it. I... I hope I am. What's that you're reading? It's a collection of short stories by James Penstroke. It was just published earlier this month. Any good? Oh yes, I love his work. He's been publishing a new serial in Brentwell Magazine. I can't wait to read it. 
Perhaps we both can together? I think you'd enjoy him. Lately, I haven't been able to concentrate on a page for more than five minutes without nodding off. Hmm. That is a pity. I'll let you get back to your book. Alright, I think I'm gonna take a break here. Auto saves here, but let me... All right, so I'm going to take a break here. Um, there's commentary. Um, so that's Lamplight City on iPad. Check it out. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks. Bye-bye.